How is it growing? In this episode, I'm going to cover three reasons why you should solarize your garden beds and how to do it correctly. In the future videos, I'm going to talk about different ways to manage nematodes, but today we're talking soil solarization. Reason number one why you should solarize your garden every summer is because of root knot nematodes. What are nematodes? Well, there are good nematodes, bad nematodes. These are soil parasites that get into the roots of certain plants. And they specifically like nightshade family plants, like tomatoes, eggplant, peppers. They're microscopic worms. The roots will start to swell up and cause knots. And that's why we call them root knot nematodes. So these microscopic worms get into the roots and make your plant very unproductive. That's the first thing that you'll notice is your plant is unproductive. And then you won't really know that the, the problem is nematodes because it's just going to be susceptible to diseases and pests. And you're going to be like, why are my tomato plants not doing well? Well, and then at the end of the garden season, you pull out the plant and you see all the knots on the roots. Bingo. There's your problem. One female nematode can lay up to 500 eggs. So you can imagine what a problem the population of this parasite can be in the, in the soil. This is the initial reason I started solarizing, but there are other benefits. Reason number two why you should solarize your garden. The compost that I have in the soil further breaks down in this process with all that heat and soluble nutrients. You know, nutrients are no good if the plant can't take it up, but this will make it available to the plant. So when I replant these boxes in the fall, it's so exciting to see everything spring back to life. In my mind, there's a big difference between dirt and soil. Dirt is dead to me. There's no life in it. Soil, on the other hand, is full of microbes and beneficial fungi. It, the plants do so much better when there's life in the soil. Unfortunately, with this process, it's going to kill all the microbes. Yeah. But the good news is that the good organisms will regenerate. The dirty life-sucking parasites will not. When I'm done with this process, at the end of the summer, I'll pull off the plastic, add worm castings and fresh compost and compost tea. Compost tea, you can think of it as probiotics for the soil. Same thing with compost. You're adding microbes and life back to the soil. And I'll cover that on a future episode too. The third reason why you should solarize your garden, it's like having a fresh, clean start. Clean slate, start over with the new garden plan. Now how to do this correctly. First of all, and when to do it. You wanna do this during the hottest weeks of the year. So obviously in, during the summer months. You really need to go at least four weeks. I used to do six weeks and then I decided, you know what, let me just do, do all summer long. Memorial Day weekend is usually when I cover my first bed. Labor Day weekend is usually when I uncover it. You want to use a clear plastic and I, I know that's counterintuitive, I thought, and most people think that you, you would be more effective using black plastic, right? Black plastic may be good for just the first couple of inches of soil. But the solar rays can penetrate deeper, especially if you have moisture throughout the soil They have heat conductivity. The thickness of plastic should be between one mil and two mil. I prefer 1.5, but at Lowe's when I went to get it, they only had two, which is fine. It's not quite as transparent, but it's enough for the solar rays to penetrate. Then the downside for having a plastic that's too thin is that it's gonna rip easily. And that brings me to another thing. It's going to be inevitable that you're going to have a raccoon get in there and rip it up. And, you know, you're going to have tears along the way. I've used a number of packaging tapes and I've learned that the best one by far is Gorilla Tape. The standard packaging tapes just don't hold up under the heat. They will turn white and flake off. Gorilla Tape doesn't do that. Another thing that happens is when it rains, it's just going to collect some water in the corners. You just simply scoop that out. It's no big deal if you don't get to it because the solar rays will still penetrate through the water and the plastic, especially since there's so little soil in those corners. And here's a bonus tip for you. Tenting. 
Tenting, yes, tenting. If you want to crank up that heat even more and maybe solarize under a shorter duration, in addition to the regular solarizing plastic, tent it. And you can use a, a water bottle or PVC pipe or something in the middle to keep a layer of air between the two pieces of plastic. I've been pretty happy with the past couple of years and my progress in these beds. I used to have horrible nematode infected roots. The worst was in 2015 when I grew passion fruit in one of the beds. And first of all, the roots took over the bed. Secondly, it was the worst nematode infection I have ever seen. So small lumps in the roots and occasional small knots is a big improvement, but I'm still cautious about contamination. Going in the trash, you don't want to contaminate anything else in the garden. I sunbake my tools. I keep a different hand trowel in each bed during the main growing season. And if in doubt, I'll sanitize the tool before I use it in a different part of the garden. Of course, you can solarize in other garden spaces as well, not just the garden beds. Checking for a couple of things. Good moisture, it should have good moisture throughout. You don't wanna have a dry pocket because you need that moisture throughout the whole bed for heat conductivity. So the solar rays and the heat can penetrate. Another thing I'm looking for are roots. You know, yesterday I, I did pretty good at going through and getting out all the roots that need to come out. I uh, also like to go around the edges and see how well the, the wood is holding up on the inside. I use the show sugi bond method to preserve the wood. But I did that last summer. So far, so good. The real test is gonna be in two or three years to see how well this wood holds up. You want it higher in the center because when it rains, you don't want it to puddle up. You want to use a clear plastic and then the solar rays are going to penetrate 12 inches deep. Now it's time to get the plastic cut. Bye-bye. seal it up as airtight as possible. And if you end up seeing weeds growing up in there, you have a leak somewhere. Air is getting in and it's not heating up enough. You want to pull it tight, as tight as you can. Like I said, you don't want this puddling up anywhere when it rains. I can feel it. it's really hot already. It is heated up. If you got something out of this, please do me a favor. Like the video, click on subscribe, click on that bell so that you'll be notified when I upload videos in the future. And let's grow together.